So we're waiting for Wissam to uh, be with us. I don't know if Wissam can hear us or see us. Not yet, I think. Wissam is there, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Can I make it? What? Uh, I will just, second, I will just remove the timer. Okay, yes, good. Good. Uh, we'll try to turn it so that you can see our full house <laughs> under Corona times. So I would like to um, welcome uh, Wissam Tanyos, uh, the director of the film you just saw. We are from there. Um, and I also want to uh, welcome Christian Aid, who's the producer of this film that you just saw. Um, uh, Wissam, has, Wissam is a young Lebanese filmmaker um, who has done a couple of films before shooting this feature debut, We Are From There. Um, and the film has premiered at the 2020 Rotterdam Film Festival, so he was just lucky to make it to an official festival before uh, everything, uh, yeah. Uh, changed and then Christian is a Lebanese producer. He's uh, he's been based in Paris for a couple of years now, and Christian has um, accompanied several productions in Lebanon. And also, we are from there is the first film that he produced on his on his own. So um, our program Southern Lights is a program about youth, and we're very happy to have two energetic talents uh, from uh, Lebanon uh, with us. Thank you so much for being with us and thank you for the audience who's um, with us uh, tonight to accompany this Q&A. Um, I would first, um, but, but I think they see us and they hear us, so it's fine. Um, I, will, I want to start with you, Wissab. Thank you for being with us. I know it's late for you. You're in Beirut. Um, Obviously, it's a very personal story. It's a pers it's a story where you know the protagonist very well. Um, you also have so many archive that has been recorded over the years by the family. When did you decide that you wanted to make a story about the two brothers? Is did did the war affect the decision to go ahead and make the story, or did you have the chance to think about it before? How did the whole process emerge for you? Uh, first of all, hi, thank you everyone for coming to the theater in these challenging times. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, uh, and thanks Rabia for, for, for hosting the film uh, against uh, all odds. Um, regarding this film, it started from like, uh, from an inst instinct of archiving. Uh, it, went, it went very uh, organic and, and organically the, 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 the shooting process. I got a call from one of my cousins who told me that uh, uh, he wants to leave, and I used always to see these images on the TV of um, of young people my age uh, leaving uh, leaving their 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 country in an illegal way. But I always I was I always distant towards these images. But as soon as I got the call from um, from one of my cousins telling me that he wants to leave the same way, my perspective towards these Im images had changed, and uh, it's, it was like a slap in the face. And I thought, okay, these images that I see on the TV are not now. I'm not uh, indifferent towards these images. They're not people that I, I, I don't know what their background. Uh, uh, th these are people that I grew up with. So this is how I, uh, this is how it started. And this is how I felt that I, I, I need to archive what's happening. I didn't know at first if I'm gonna do a short film, a medium length film, a feature film. But uh, what, what was important is that pulse that I felt that I want to archive what's happening. And I think the, the 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 archive instinct comes from 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 my uncle because we were raised with the camera wherever we go. My my uncle used to film us when we were kids. So it, I think it came from from this uh, from the genes uh, of, of of my uncle. And obviously, it's a story about your two cousins, but you're very much involved in the film. So in a way, also it is your story. Before we talk about the explosion of Lebanon and now everyone wants to leave the country, 
when did you decide that you wanted to be part in the story that because you're visible in the film it's also you are the narrator of the film when did you decide to be as involved in the story uh, and did you imagine that you would be as involved as we see it in the film uh, actually it was it was a hard decision just to put myself uh, in front of the camera not physically but uh, to to share my my uh, intimate story intimate my um, my intimate life with the, with the viewers. I was avoiding to do that actually, but uh, uh, because I, I've done a short film before, uh, a short documentary before uh, uh, before this this film, and I, I I was a lot in it. I I it was a lot. Um, it was a kind of therapy for me because it was a, about a loss of uh, one of the members of the family, and I did a film about that. And now when I see it, I say I'm too much in this film. I I need to to. To take some distance and when i started doing this film i said okay this time i just want to be the observer i want to observe and and i want to stay back but i don't think you can never avoid to put yourself it comes also it it it, it, uh, it became a very organic process that as soon as we're editing as soon as we're uh, we're filming more scenes i was talking about myself more than talking to my cousins more than talking about my cousins and uh, I, I was supported. I was, I was, I was lucky to be supported with a, with a, with a good, um, very good team, and uh, that believed in the film, and that that they were passionate about the story as much as I was, which was my 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 producer and uh, and my uh, my editor, uh, Rina Hashisho, and my uh, my, my French French. French. So, so th these people, uh, these, these, uh, they, they, they helped me a lot to, 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 um, to, 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 to come out in this film, to put myself in this film and talk about myself. And which brings me to the question of your encounter with Christian. Uh, Christian is also, just like your cousins, a guy who left the country. So in a way, Christian also was moving to Paris and, uh, changing his life to maybe also have a better future, as one of your protagonists says in the film. Um, before I ask you about that, I wanted to ask Christian, how did you decide to embark on this journey, knowing that in a way you have a similar maybe experience of departure, of course, for complete different reasons, maybe, but you also have left. So how was it for you to embark on a journey of uh, that maybe gets you closer to the protagonist? How did you how did you do that? Hello everyone. Um, actually, when we Sam told me about his project, he came through a common friend in Lebanon, and he told me that he has a documentary. So I told him that I don't like documentaries uh, to produce. I like I love to watch documentaries, but I wasn't. Um, I didn't take the decision to produce a documentary. And then he told me, yeah, but I'm gonna send you some visual uh, material so you can watch what I already filmed, and I asked him to do a written dossier so I can know more about the project. And then when I saw the footage he sent me, he sent me like a five minutes trailer. I immediately fell in love with the project because as you said, Rabia, I felt that there are many similarities with, the, with was, what was happening with me on a personal level because it was exactly the timing when I left Lebanon to Paris and I was starting to try to build a life in a new city. And then I saw the trailer and it was about these two guys living the same thing I'm living in different ways. So I said like, I, that I have to definitely do this film. I really feel it's a story I would like to help uh, in telling. So that's that's how I decided to embark on the journey with Wissam. And Wissam, how did you feel to have a producer who is also living the story of your protagonist? Did, did that comfort you or did because you live in Lebanon so your producer was not physically with you all the time or let's say your main producer because you also have a French co-producer who also lives in Paris how did you feel did you feel like you wanted to share more physically with the producer um were you happy that your producer was away uh, how, how did the encounter uh, how did you build this relationship of trust with uh, with Christian yeah, I, I think uh, this is a very interesting uh, process, maybe uh, just um, similar to the to, to, to the experience of making a film, uh, building this uh, bond with the producers and with the, with the, with the crew, and make them uh, get involved and 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 immerse in this in this uh, cinematic adventure. Because uh, working on a film, uh, especially this kind of independent cinema, these kind of films. Uh, you're, you're doing it because you're passionate about it, not because you want to 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 pay the bills. Uh, 
making this film. So so it's either you want to do it because you, you love, you, you want to do it or you, you don't want to. So uh, also my editor uh, live, lived for a while in Jordan and um, it was, it was uh, I was really worried about that because each one of us was in a city. Uh, uh, Christian and Gabriel were in Paris and, and Rina was in, uh, in Amman and I was in Beirut and uh, but but uh, th this whole experience was a learning process for me, not not uh, not only as a person, but also as a filmmaker, because I learned the new ways of of, uh, of working. We worked uh, um, we worked uh, uh, um, remotely for a lot of a lot of months. We used to send cuts uh, for 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 Christian, and he sees some. He watched the cut, and then he sends his feedback. And we used to discuss uh, some things. The thing with with Christian. Um, and we always uh, always like uh, talk about that that he's a very realistic uh, person and uh, I'm very um, uh, sometimes I, I like to escape it I mean I'm, I like to uh, I don't want to say it, I don't want to say a dreamer but I uh, we, we're so different in, uh, in the way we treat uh, things the way we get uh, we get the emails because uh, making a film is also getting all these emails with the yes you got the fund uh, we're sorry to inform you that you didn't get the fund so so also we had different reactions on 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 uh, on how on how to deal with that and it was a learning process it was interesting for me as a human not also as a, as a as as a person but also as a as a filmmaker but it was really very interesting uh very interesting i call it an, a roller coaster because it's it's on not only ups it's not always the festivals there are a lot of downs when you're making a film a lot of disappointments uh because sometimes for a filmmaker especially he he, he stops everything and he thinks his life is uh, revolves around this film f this film there's nothing else but this film but uh, yeah it, it's a learning process then you learn how to put uh, where to put your film because um it, it, it can it can uh, it can get back it can fire back at you in a negative way so you need also to protect yourself and this is something that that i learned also uh when working with with the two different pr producers that that uh, that live abroad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh christian did that change your perspective on producing documentary films in the end <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that, that actually i'm starting now a new documentary project so uh, I fell in love with the process. It really went super well with Wissam and Rena, the editor, and Gabriel, the co-producer. Um, at first, it was a bit hard maybe to settle a way to work. And then we were experiencing and experimenting with several ways of working. And I think that we pushed ourselves to new places because of this distance that was separating us. So, um, for example, at the beginning, when Wissam wanted to share with me some... Uh, uh, some rushes to start the editing process and think of a structure and all this stuff. Like we decided to do the different stories of, um, uh, of uh, the two characters on two separate timelines. And he sent me both, both, both timelines, sorry. And then we watched them and then we started doing the parallel editing. And, you know, like we were experimenting in the ways of working and it was a lot of exchange, actually. We exchanged a lot of ideas. We tried a lot of things. Uh, we spoke a lot uh, on the phone, on uh, Skype. We really spent hours like talking about how we want to make the film and in which direction and how to edit it and how to, to tell the story. So um, I personally love this process. And I really think that the producer has a very important role. Uh, after this experience, I can tell in documentaries, it's super important for the producer to be present during the editing process because it helps the director a lot uh, to bring the story to light because the director doesn't have any distance to the story. They shot it, they thought of it, they wrote it. So in the editing, they don't have a lot of distance. And when a producer comes, uh, comes with a new opinion and new ideas, it really helps the director get to the point he wants to get to and tell the story the way he wants to tell it. And from that, I want to uh, ask Wissam a last question before we let the public ask questions, if they have any. Um, we discuss a lot the making of a story. In the end, you say um, somewhere, I read it, that you wanted to make a timeless story. Uh, there were so many stories on um, uh, the Syrians fleeing and the Syrian refugees, and this was all over the news, but also in festivals. So, you know, um, how did you decide to come up with a film that 
is at least that you think at least is a timeless uh, story or a different film than from all the other films that you were seeing or how did you make this film be a very personal experience that is very different from um, all the things that we were seeing uh, actually this is was it was a very delicate matter that was we were, were trying to treating uh, to, to, to 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 treat it in a um, uh, it was it was very delicate. I was it was really very challenging, and um, it was uh, something that uh, that that I didn't know at first how to work with because uh, um, back then it was a topic that we were seeing everywhere on the news, in films, uh, in, in festivals, even in uh, TV films. So it was we were we had a lot of material about the subject. So why come up with a new film? Uh, about about the subject, I, 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 so I try to 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 uh, to, to tackle this matter uh, on 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 talk, on putting the story as a family story, as the story of two young people that that can uh, can be anywhere. They can be in Colombia, in Spain, in Germany, not uh, as two Syrian. Uh, uh, not only as two Syrian uh, brothers, so it's uh, this this film. Yes, they are they are two refugees, but I know these two refugees very well. These two refugees, I grew up uh, with them, and uh, we played together. Uh, we shared. Uh, their uncle is like uh, their father is uh, is like a father to me. So I try. It's very important on how because like uh, in cinema, sometimes there are a lot of uh, recycling of ideas and of films. We see the sometimes the same the same ideas but it's how the the subject is treated and how what's the what's the take of the director on the subject so i tried and it, it wasn't easy at first because we, we we took a lot of time to 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 um to finish the film to say okay this is the final cut because we, we could have done that before when 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 uh, when the news were all about that but we chose to take our time just to make a cut that we can defend that we can personally that if someone asks me anything or or or, or i i can defended i know why i put this shot why people we put this scene here so i because i, I for me in my opinion uh, something that bothers me sometimes uh, personally that cinema sometimes is a lot labeled we we label the films this is the film about that and about that and i was trying to avoid to fit in one in one column just to be to not not to not to fit in the refugee column um although there are a lot of films that were made on the subject beautiful films but i tried to to put the film because this story is not only about refugees but it's a family story and a story about myself as much as it's about my cousins mm -hmm. um i want to open up to the audience if the audience has questions i want to say uh, you you've really worked uh, very hard remotely so probably you're prepared for the pandemic then <laughs> better than any of us. <laughs> um, do we have questions from the floor? Do we have any question for Wissam or for Christian that you would like to ask? Yes, please. I would ask you just to raise your voice so that we can hear you because we will not, we will not share a microphone. Did you hear the question? Uh, a bit, the relationship between the, the two relationship brothers. between the brothers and uh, also if, if the brothers have seen the film or? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, the brothers have seen uh, the film, have seen the, 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 the final cut. And uh, they were, they, as they, they, it was very uh, two different reactions because they are there as you, as you, as you have seen in the film, there there is a contrast in their person in their personalities and their way how they how the how the uh, the how, what what family means to each one of these characters. So they are so different different. So even when they watched the film, they had I had a very two different reactions. When Milo watched it, he it was it was really emotional for him. He's, he 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 told he told me something that I that uh, I can't forget. He told me. Remember when you when you, when they say when you die you see part you see all your life in front of you. He said this is what I saw when I watched the film, and he couldn't hold himself and he he he, he cried. Uh, so Jamil, it was different. I I sent him the cut and I said, "What's your feedback?" Because I was really nervous uh, because it's not easy to 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 because they 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 I had their trust 
because it wasn't also easy to film them sometimes because they're they are my cousins but they have their intimacy and i was sometimes putting the camera the, the at 7 a.m and i want uh, uh, insisting to film them so it's uh, th that that's a different uh, different uh, different subject but uh, but uh, um, uh, I, I told him, like, did you see the film, Jamil? And he said, uh, yeah, I, I only watched half of it. But I was like, I, I, it took me five years to make it. How you, how you watch only half of it? And then you say, and then when we, when we, when, when I, we had a call after a week and he said, like, listen, I couldn't continue watching it. I watched the half of it and then, then I, I, I had to stop and then I rewatched after a few days. So I think it was very emotional for the two characters just to watch uh, to watch their lives five years ago, how they were, how they how they used to think because I, I, I saw them growing up in front of my camera. They we were I was 25 when I started and a, a year after year because I would also see them when they were kids. So they were seeing themselves since they were kids and growing up till the till 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 now so it was really overwhelming for them to to to, to watch uh, to watch the film and how's and the, that relationship the now relationship between the two brothers? yeah the relationship uh, sometimes i talk to them when for example milo is visiting jamil in sweden or or jamil is visiting uh, milo in uh, in berlin and I, I i i talk to them and they're in front of the camera and someone sits on someone's chair and they start you sit you, you sat on my chair this is my chair, and so so it's. Um, I think this is they were together. I think this is what's interesting in the family and in, in, in the film. It's the how the uh, what is the family and and is is the, um, if we're a family should we live together or because in Lebanon and the and the Arab world there is this. Uh, I think it's different. It's definitely different in in Europe that uh, young young adults like they they live with most of them. Not most, but maybe seventy-five percent. They live with their parents until they get married. So, although they 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 live together in the same house when they were kids, till they till, till they got separated, and when they when they uh, when they went to Europe, each one of them they didn't want to live together. Although they are, both of them are looking for family, they're looking for a home, but they don't they didn't want to be in the, at the, in the same home. Each one of them had a different uh, different fantasy of 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 a home and the and the family. Although it came with a lot of challenges, but they didn't want to live together because it was a question that I asked them and I I. I got a lot of uh, uh, feedback about that, that why they don't live together if they're both looking for a home, for a family. But I think sometimes we want to be, as Milo sa says, sometimes we, sometimes we want to be free, uh, even if we're looking for a home or, or a family. We want, uh, we, we, we want to be on, our, on, on, our, on ourselves. Do we have other questions in the audience? Yes, please. Curious how making this film was some changed your relationship to your cousins, or if it changed your relationship to your cousins. Um. It, it, it changed a lot because I think uh, when you're when you're a filmmaker when you're filming uh, a member of your family, you think that you have uh, you can do anything. And you think that you know these characters really well, but when you bring the com the camera and and the camera stands between you, between you and, and the subject, subject. It's, a it's, totally a totally it's a totally different it's a totally different perspective because um, you, they they sometimes say things that that you don't expect and you think that you know them very well, but but when the camera is there, no, you don't know them. These are not your cousins and anymore. These are not your family anymore. These are your characters, the the characters of the of, of the of the film. Um, at a certain point, personally, we we got a bit um, we got we had a bit of distance because I was the, the filmmaker and like calling them. I need you to record this. Uh, if you're going to do the uh, to to if you have a concert, can you record it? Because I I had issues with the visa. I can't go. Um, I, I I can't always uh, go to Europe whenever I can just to film them if they had something. And I used to get really frustrated. This is happening and I can't be there. I can't film it. So these two characters they 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 participated. And the, the and the craft of the film and making in making this film because they they shot some scenes by themselves, so so my relationship I think it, it got back on track when we finished the film because uh, even with Milo I had sometimes um, I had a difficulty with him because when I was in in Berlin and where I'm filming him I went twice to film in Berlin two different years and when I was there 
I was expecting to film uh, a number of scenes per day and, and, and I, I, we wake up and he's still asleep till noon and I got frustrated. So why, why, why he's still asleep? I want to film, I want to film. I, I, I have to go back to Beirut in two days. So, so my relationship with, with them, it was a bit, um, it, it's different. I forgot that we're cousins now, they are characters and I had to do that to, to, to take this distance. And Christian, sometimes I remember when uh, we, we had, uh, I had a terrible day in Berlin and uh, he, said, he told me that I don't, I don't want to film anymore. And I had, a, I almost had a heart attack because I almost shot the half of the film and now he, he, he and, that, and I remember really well that I was in the train station and I called uh, Christian, I told him, I don't know what to do, he's being, uh, he, he's being mean to me. I don't know why. And he told uh, he told me something. Uh, remember, this is this is this is your cousin, and uh, and he has his intimacy. Maybe he wakes up in a day and he feels like I don't want to be filmed today, and this is very normal. But for me, I think for for a filmmaker, uh, I'm auto criticizing myself. You feel a bit. Uh, you're selfish. You, you always want more, and you sometimes you forget that. Because these are your cousins, you feel that you, ha you, you you allow yourself to do stuff that maybe you don't do with other characters, especially in documentary. But sometimes I, I, I had to be remembered that, no, these are human beings. I, they are talking about things that maybe they, they don't want to share or they don't want feel, they don't feel comfortable sharing, sharing this, 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 even if I'm their cousin. So it was a roller coaster also my relationship with them but it's, it, I, I really enjoyed this this uh, these ups and downs it was a really very interesting uh, interesting process also my relationship with them Christian did you meet the characters uh, were you part of the the shooting or was uh, was Wissam doing the shootings on his own I didn't get the chance to meet them during the shooting I met them only at the premiere in Rotterdam and it was super funny because I felt that I know them super well because I had <laughs> hours of rushes about them, about very intimate moments, how they think, how they see things and life. And uh, they didn't know anything about me, you know, so it was a huge difference of uh, knowledge. I felt I know them very much and they felt they don't know me at all. So the encounter was quite interesting. But we spent a very nice time in Rotterdam and then we had some drinks and then we danced and then we became <laughs> friends. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, no, during the shooting, I couldn't travel with the Wissam. So, uh, and I even tried to keep Wissam as a direct contact with them, even for signing papers and uh, taking any authorization or planning the shooting. I kept Wissam as a contact person with them. I didn't want, it, I didn't want to be in the, in the middle because, you know, like, as Wizam was saying, it's very um, it's very uh, delicate for for them because like it's, they are cousins and at the same time he's a filmmaker and they are characters. So I thought that if a producer comes on board as well and becomes the middle person, it could destroy everything. So I really kept a distance with them during the shooting, and I only met them during the premiere. Are there any questions? Yes, please. I find it astounding and amazing that uh, someone would decide to make a film about something so unpredictable. I mean, you didn't know whether uh, the passage over the over the water would actually be successful. You didn't know that in advance. That is quite something, and um, I compliment highly on your efforts your decisiveness, and um, yeah, on this, um, the intimacy that you could portray by uh, cajoling your, your cousins into doing what you wanted to show. Which, which really, I think, as a segue to this uh, comment, um, how did you deal with the unpredictable? There are so many unpredictable things all around the film. The lady was mentioning the, the passage over sea, but, there, but the film is full of unpredictable moments. How did you manage to... I think this is... Um, this is uh... This is something um, like it's it's good as much as it's bad because I think this is the magic of documentaries. The, you don't know what's gonna happen, and you you expect something, then you get something maybe stronger or that you can use uh, a better tool of storytelling. And sometimes you you expect something and you get something something worse. I think we, you have to 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 have tough tough skin about that. Uh, thick skin, sorry about that, 
So that's, you know, when you're shooting a documentary, you, you have to put your mind that maybe half half what you have in mind is not going to uh, uh, apply on, on the ground and maybe you're going to get something else. So so I... I, I I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't very, um, uh, I wasn't very tetu. Uh, when I speak in Obstinate. French, I forget the word in English. When I speak in English, <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't very, um, what was the word, Rabia? Obstinate. Yeah, I wasn't very, uh, um, I, I, I just said, uh, this is happening. Okay, let me go, let me go with the flow. But I can't go with the flow uh, to film them, for example, for 10 years, because we had this, this problem that the film could, could last for, we can, do, we can do a boyhood, just film for 20 years, and there, there are still some interesting stuff. So that was also a challenge to learn when to stop filming, because even when we finish the, 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 the cut, I, st I, I, I still uh, get calls from them that uh, I, because we, 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 um, we, we, grew, we, we grew this ritual between us when there's something we call, we call each other, we say that uh, next week I have a concert, next week I have something, next week I got a new job, uh, uh, if you want to film. And, uh, and, and I had to, to say to myself, uh, no, this is not important and this is important. I can't, I can't film them all the time because as a, as a filmmaker, I also need, need to work and uh, to, to be able to live and to be able to travel to, to film. So if I don't do that, I uh, no work and no no film. So I need to to juggle between 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 my my uh, my film and also my my career. So uh, um, so it, it it was really 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 challenging. But I think it, this is the magic of docu documentaries. I think it's a bless uh, the unpredictable sometimes. And in a lot of situations, it's a, it's a bless. Do we have any further comments? Because I think we Sam is giving us the privilege of being with us, and it's eleven thirty in Beirut, so oh, we're no problem. No problem. <laughs> it's my pleasure. But I think also the audience uh, shouldn't stay too long, unfortunately, because of all the lockdown. You all have to leave, so I don't know which one is in a worse situation. But um, we Sam, uh, thank you so much for your film, uh, Christian. Thank you so much also for being with us. Um, we were able to um, sell out 30 tickets that we were uh, allowed uh, to sell. So we're very happy that this was a, like a Corona sellout. Uh, but at the same time, and also our biggest happiness is that we were able to screen your film in the theater uh, and mm -hmm. share, experience, share experiences together. And uh, yeah, we wish you better days, first and foremost in Beirut, of course, uh, with Sam and Christian, because Paris is not easy these days, and we hopefully uh, wish to see you here in Frankfurt with your next film. Thank you so much, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs>